the relationship between C and D is if D go up by one unit, C go up by 3.14 unit. Relationship is C is equal to uh, pi D. Is equal to pi D, right? Equal to pi D. How do we know? Okay, we're going to prove that. So this is the small circle. This is the big circle. How big it is? K times bigger. So this is K times bigger. So what is the K? K is the, the scale factor. What is the scale factor? Another way of saying d2 over d1. So if this is c1, this is c2. If this is d1, this is d2. So what is c2? c2 is k c1. What is d2? d2 is k d1. So c2 over d2 is equal to k c1 over k d1. K, K cancel. D2 over D2 is equal to C1 over D1. And what is the ratio of C1 over D1? Pi. And pi is constant. The size of pi is the same as size of pi over here. It doesn't matter. Pi remain constant. So the ratio remain constant. The pi is 3.14 over here. The pi is 3.14 over there. So they are the similar circle. Okay, great. So C over D c over d is equal to c over uh, c n over d n or just simply c over d which is pi so that means pi is constant so that c is equal to d pi so we prove that moving around the sun and the diameter is 3 100 million kilometers. If the earth is start at A and come back to A, how long it takes? 365 days or one year? How long does, does the earth move in terms of kilometers? I want you to find the order of magnitude. So you can say C is equal to pi D. So pi is 3, order of magnitude, you don't care about the small decimal. D is 300 million. So is equal to, don't forget kilometers, 10 is to 8 kilometers. 9 is greater than 3.16, so 8 plus 1. So it's 9 order of magnitude in terms of kilometers. If you do it in meter, this is 3 times 10 is to 8 kilometer, 3 times 10 is to 11 meter. So this is 12 order of magnitude in terms of meter. 9 order of magnitude in terms of kilometers. We're going to discover the relationship between circumference and diameter. If you look at this cylindrical object, you want to see a circumference and diameter. You see the different shape, right? This is, of course, a different shape. This, is, this has a small c and a small d. This has big c, big d. We're going to prove that the ratio of a small c and a small d is the same as the ratio of big C, big D. That's what we're going to prove. But more importantly, we're going to prove that the slope of the graph, CD graph, is 3.14, or very close to 3.14. We accept 5% uh, measurement error, not more than 5%. Okay. So now let's get started with data collection. Before I do data collection, I just want to remind you that when you have the base fit line, this is your circumference, which you're going to measure it in centimeter. This is your diameter, which you're going to measure it in centimeter. The slope doesn't have any unit. It's unitless because circumference, which is centimeter, diameter, which is centimeter, cancel. Okay. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to include zero because if we be theoretical, then of course you're going to use zero comma zero, your first data point. All right, then you're going to get, you, you're going to have a bigger sense of getting 3.14. But I really want you to not use zero comma zero because that's in theory, okay? This is your measurement. Um, Checking your measurement skill. 
So I'm not going to ask you, I'm not going to allow you to use 0, 0,0. 0, 0,0, we are not measuring it. Okay, so that's going to make the data a little bias. It's going to move it toward 3.14, and we don't want it. If we get 3.14, we are happy. If we don't get 3.14, as long as it is less than 5%, we are okay. So you're going to have three data. If data one is this, data two is this, and data three is this, then this is best fit line one, this is best fit line three. One and two are not good. One and three are not good. Two is okay. Why? One point is above the best fit line, one point is below the best fit line, and one point is on the best fit line. Right? So I use as the three point. So D1, D, uh, C1, D2, C2, D3, C3. So I have to find the slope of this line. How can I find the slope of this line? By using, let's say, C2 minus C1, D2 minus D1. If I use this C2 and this C1 and this D2 and this D1, then this would be wrong. I cannot use the tab one. Once I have the best fit line, tab all, allow me to create the best fit line. Once I create the best fit line, forget about the tab all. So how are you going to find the point? You're going to find, can any, find any point except this three point. This is illegal point. This is not legal. This is not legal. You can find this point called C1, uh, call uh, D1, C1. You can find this point called D2, C2. And they will allow you to find the slope. Okay. Without further ado, I'm going to measure the three objects. This is 5,3. Find the circumference is 16.5. You have 10, 16, 16.5, 8.5. I get 26.4. This is exactly 10.5. So I'm going to record what I see. 10.5. I get 32.5. So 32.5. All right. This three point I'm going to use to draw this graph. So this is the point one. This is the point two, and this is the point three. All right, so when I grade the slope, I cannot use this point. I cannot use point, this point, I cannot use this point. I have to use this point, point one. And the point one is different than point one. I have to use point two. And point two is different than this point two. And only then I can get the pi. And then I'm gonna have to find the person error. Okay, so what is the person error? The person error is accepted value, which is 3.14, minus the measured value, divide by accepted value, absolute value times 100%. If the person error is less than 5%, then we are confident about our measurement. If it's more than 5%, then we are not confident. Okay, so let's measure it. Five point three to so 16.5. So 16.5 is here. 0.4. 26.4 is now 10.5 that with the ruler 5 comma 15.6 our second point is 9 comma 28 9 comma 28 minus 15.6 divided by 9 minus 5 this is 3.13 okay so now our person error is equal to 3.14 minus 3.13 divided by 3.14 times 100%. Okay. You're going to check it by using calculus.